Well, hey there, Sharon Hornellstrom here. What's a story got to do with supersizing my business? Well, doing a women's summit right now, and a couple of really interesting things have come up as part of the women's summit and interviewing 30 amazing women all about customers. And it got me to thinking about story and the stories that we tell. Now, it's interesting. We forget, or at least I forget, that we are always living in a story. Our life is one big narrative story that's always continuing. It's never ending. It's like the never ending story. If you've ever seen that movie, it's a, a fantasy movie, but the, our lives are very much like that. If you don't believe me, close your eyes for a second. Try to think of nothing. Try to not think of a purple unicorn. Just let your mind go blank and black. So what'd you think about? I guarantee your mind didn't shut off. You didn't stop. You probably thought of a purple unicorn, which I know that that would take some imagination. So you know that your mind is always creating stories and events and things to fill any void that there might be. Our brain, our subconscious will never let us shut off or shut down. Even when we're sleeping, we're dreaming and we're thinking in pictures and stories. So what is the power of this? Well, and why is it important for our businesses and growing our businesses? I've recently learned and discovered, because I guess we've always known, that using stories and sharing stories is the difference between a so-so brand or a, a business failure and a seven-figure business or more, whatever it is that you want to create. Because stories tap into and allow us to relate to other people on an emotional level. And we all make all of our business decisions based on emotion. We, we decide based on emotion and we justify with reason and logic. It, you can argue with me if you want, but test it on yourself. I was thinking as I was getting ready this morning, do I do that? Do I always do things based on stories and based on emotion? And yeah, the answer is yes. And it's not unique to women. We all do that because stories bind us. Stories build no like and trust. Stories cause connection, emotional connection. And we do business with and we relate to people that we are emotionally connected with. Now, I was thinking about this as part of the Women's Summit today. And one of the things I noticed that's come up a couple of times during the summit is that women seem to need permission more than men do. Now, I could just say women need permission more than men. And that's why they struggle with business or, or taking action in their business. And you could agree or disagree with that and then not listen to another thing that I say. But if I tell you a story about needing permission, which I'm going to do right now, chances are that you're going to understand and listen more to what I say after that because some of my story may or may not be something that you can relate to. And even if you can't relate to it, if I do a good job telling that story, we'll have some kind of an emotional connection. It will build no like and trust. So it's really interesting because this did trigger something in me that I didn't even realize was affecting me. The whole need permission or asking for permission thing. And I honestly thought that in my corporate career I had battled this and I've, you know, kind of prided myself on being a rule breaker, you know, do what I'm going to do and take action and then ask for forgiveness later versus permission. But I realized as this came up in a, in a couple of the speakers discussion, the whole need for permission. So I started asking myself, well, where did that come from? Because yeah, I'm just as guilty as a lot of other women and men too. Don't get me wrong. Some men need permission before they'll do things too. But overall, predominantly, it seems like my experience has shown me that fewer men wait for permission. They just take action. Women, on the other hand, wait for permission. And one of the speakers shared with me, and that's what reminded me, a story of um, actually wetting her pants in grade school. And I realized that when I was in first grade, I had a super duper mean teacher, like hit me with a ruler mean teacher because she wanted to keep everybody in line. And I was sort of a, an outlier and outrageous little girl. And I thought I could do what I wanted, but she set me straight by whapping me with a ruler repeatedly. And one of my best little friends sat in front of me in class. And I'm not going to share her name because I don't know that anyone has ever told this story or that she's ever told the story. But we had to ask permission if we wanted to do anything in that class. If we wanted to go to the bathroom, if we wanted to sharpen our pencil, if we wanted to do anything, this witch, and I will say witch, she's long since passed away, but she was terrible. I don't know how on earth she ever got to be a grade school teacher. I mean, she even looked like a witch. She had like a wart on the end of her nose and she had a wrinkly, mean, old face. And 
back then she was probably in her 40s, but I thought she was like 90 because I was in first grade. And my friend had to go to the bathroom and she raised her hand and asked about the bathroom and this heinous teacher said, no, you can't go to the bathroom. And she fidgeted and she sat for a few minutes and then she raised her hand again and asked if she could go to the bathroom. And Mrs. <clears throat> Meanness, no, no, said no again. And she did this three or four times and asked if she could go to the bathroom. And every time this amazingly ridiculous teacher said no. And all of a sudden, my friend wet her pants in her chair, in her seat in class and had to live through the humiliation and the ridicule of this horrible teacher. And I couldn't stand that she was being so mean to my friend. And so I started writing on my desk in pencil. And I knew that that was against the rules, but I started writing on my desk in pencil because I wanted to take the mean attention off of my friend. And so, of course, the teacher whacked me with the ruler. I started crying and it was this big dramatic thing. And the principal ended up coming in. And it was just a big melee. My mom had to come to school and my mom actually had to come to school and sit in that classroom for the rest of the year so that this teacher would behave and not be mean to us little kids. But she continued to teach there. So I don't know. It just goes to tell you that the world's a very different place. But that needing to ask permission stuck with me throughout my life in terms of the risks that I would take and the things that I would do. And again, I didn't even realize it was operating in my life in the background as an undercurrent until I remembered this story and this event and said, no, I don't need to ask anybody for permission. I'm, I'm, I'm an old lady. I can do whatever I want, when I want, where I want, with whomever I want, wearing whatever I want, which is in this case, my bathrobe today as I'm chatting with you and sharing this story. And we Many of us women have experienced this because there's, you know, women do better in school because we're better at following the rules. We're better at doing what we're told to do. And we need to bust out of that to grow and supersize our businesses. So that's my little story about needing permission. And now whatever I follow up with, with that story, I like to think that people can hear me and can relate to me a little bit more and understand that, yeah, I'm human too. And bad stuff happens. And, and I'm one of these people that's affected by bad stuff happening to other people as much as to myself. And I wonder why my daughter and my son are that way. Well, it's because they get it from me. But we all have stories like that, not necessarily wetting your pants because you need permission, but we all have stories that we can share about how we came about choosing the business that we do and doing what it is that we do in our life. And by sharing that, people connect with us and our business and our brands on an emotional level and are much more likely to do business with us than if we're just out there selling based on features and benefits because people can get the same features and benefits from anywhere else and from a lot of other sources, not just us. So we need to share with them what is unique and special about us and why they should know, like, and trust us and do business with us. That's it. Go out, make it a fantastic day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.